Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be sharing with you some recommendations of some billionaire romances. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first one is The Billionaire's Fake Fiance by Annika Martin. So this is a really grumpy billionaire who um, is trying to land this account from this even wealthier woman and she does not like that he kind of has the reputation of a playboy and so he needs a fake date um, because the older lady has this whole like excursion planned on this yacht for him to kind of sell her on why she should choose his company and so he needs a fake date for that. Well his assistant actually tells the lady that she that he is engaged so now he needs a fake fiance and he tells his assistant I don't care who you set me up with just pick somebody and so they set him up with his hairdresser who was like the complete opposite of him very very sunshine um, and they are stuck together on a yacht um, so there's a lot of forced proximity but this one is so good um, and she just like completely turns his world upside down um, in a good way but anyway this is a great billionaire romance the next one is Eastern Lights by Brittany C. Cherry. So this is Aaliyah and Connor and they meet on Halloween one night. They don't tell each other their real names. They're both I think in costume um, and they spend the whole night together and it's very magical um, and then they go their separate ways. Well two years later um, Connor has now spent the last two years building up his business and he's one of New York City's most eligible bachelors um, and she is working her dream job in publishing and they are reconnected at this event um, and she is actually supposed to marry someone else and this is kind of a rough rough patch for them because they are excited to see each other again but obviously she is um, in another relationship. Um, but they do obviously end up together in the end, and I really enjoyed this book. Okay, next is Reed Rivers from the Reed Rivers Trilogy by Lauren Rowe. Reed Rivers owns his own record label um, and <clears throat> is a very kind of cocky billionaire, and they first meet when she, she I think is trying to get a job. Um, she's a journalist I'm pretty sure and is trying to get a job somewhere and decides that nobody else would think about going to this like music um, seminar type thing and so she goes hoping to land a job with one of the magazines or something there and Reed Rivers is speaking there and they kind of have this like silent communication throughout with a lot of winks and very subtle um, communication and um anyway he is very attracted to her and so he continues to try to find out more about her and make sure that she is hired to do the interview um on his artist for his record label and so she's around a lot more and then obviously they have a romance but um he definitely is a <laughs> very cocky rich man <laughs> um but this is a fabulous series and i really love love Reed Rivers. You definitely, I feel like you definitely have to read the whole trilogy to really, really love him, but um, these are some fabulous books. <clears throat> okay, then we have Temporary Wife Temptation by J.C. Lee. This is a marriage of convenience um, so that she can adopt her orphaned niece, and his grandmother is, the hero's grandmother is trying to um, force him to marry a stranger that she has picked out for him, um, and so he, they get married and he is trying to win the CEO seat at this company um and she moves in with him into his I think it's an apartment but it's like crazy big and super nice um anyway so this is there's like dog hair flying around my face this is another really good billionaire romance then we have To Have and To Hate by R.S. Gray, which is another marriage of convenience, but Walt is supposed to marry Elizabeth's sister. Um, Elizabeth's family is in need of some money and their grandparents have this like there's a trust but their grandparents have this like rule that they cannot get access to it until the two fa families marry it, it's a little fuzzy but anyway so her family needs money from the trust and so they're trying to get elizabeth's sister to marry walt well 
she like lies and says that she's eloping with somebody else and runs away so Elizabeth is forced to marry him and um, he is very standoffish like after the wedding he's like okay hey, do not contact me unless it's an emergency here's my assistant's phone number if you need anything talk to my assistant and kind of leaves well she is refusing to use the money from the trust because she just doesn't like this whole situation um, but she needs a place to live and so she asks him to co-sign on an apartment with her he's not okay with any of the places that she wants to live um, but any of the places that he's okay with her living she can't afford and so she ends up moving in with him and his crazy large apartment or house or whatever um, and it is their romance and it's adorable and I love the way that he he like she's an artist and so he keeps coming home with like supplies for her and lets her just like completely rearrange his living room so that she can repaint this like super famous painting he has in his living room and um, anyway this is a really good romance as well okay then we have the takeover by T.L. Swan so Tristan Miles is the CEO of a company who like buys other companies and takes them over and takes them apart or resells them um, and that's how he meets the heroine as he's trying to buy her company she has recently lost her husband and has kept this company afloat as much as she can and so she turns him down and is like no this is my son's only legacy from their dad and I kind of never want to want to see you again well then she goes to a convention and he is there. I don't know if he's the one like in charge of the convention or if he's just speaking there but um, they run into each other again and he convinces her to spend a few days with him and obviously it turns into more from that but he um, is not prepared for the life that she lives with her boys but he does fall in love with the boys and it is the sweetest romance and he is someone who doesn't really flaunt his money once um, once their relationship starts at first he does like they take off to Paris I think um, and anyway but once they're together it truly is about their relationship and the boys and doing what the boys need and it's just so sweet and I adored this book okay and then the last one is the billionaires forbidden little sister so this is Theo who is a billionaire and he goes to Italy because he owns this club and the club is having its grand opening or whatever and at the club he runs into Lena who is in Italy at a fashion school for a year and they hit it off at the club opening but he does not tell her that he owns the club um, <coughs> or that he owns the hotel that they're actually both staying in and they decide to have a whirlwind romance while they are both in Italy and then um, they both go back home and they run into each other again and find out that he is one of her brother's good friends. And um, so they are off limits, but they continue their relationship in private. Um, this is the only billionaire book I've read by Max Monroe. They have a ton, uh, but I definitely want to check out more from them. But this one was fabulous. So those are all the billionaire romances that I have to recommend to you guys. If you have one that you absolutely love that I need to check out, definitely leave it down below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.